Hey there, it is Tom Steering on the behalf of Indie Structural Productions with the last episode of the Throwback Baritone series. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and get all the electronics done and then do the setup. So yeah, fun stuff. First things first, gonna need to drill a hole for the jack. Now, for this guitar, I'm using a barrel jack, just because I kind of like barrel jacks, and I think they're a lot nicer to look at than having a big jack plate of sorts. So first, drilling up a pilot hole, making sure that I get it completely straight because the battle jack will not give way uh, then using a much bigger drill bit there's a 12 mil drill bit to uh, basically make the jack fit Going slowly just to avoid tear out because this guitar does have finish on it already. Doesn't quite fit yet, so need to go back with the drill and kind of finesse the hole a bit. Now for the shielding. So a lot of people use copper tape or shielding paint, but I've grown rather fond of using aluminium tape to do the very same. Checking the size of the switch just to make sure I have the right size hole. But by the looks of it, and to go back and drill a bit more. Always so nerve wracking drilling into a finished guitar. But if you do it carefully enough, You'll avoid all the tear out and you'll avoid ruining that finish that you just made. Tightening up the washer, being very careful not to slip so I don't damage the washer nor damage the top of the guitar. Then the wiring for the pickups goes in. So I'm going to be using EMG SRO, I think these were the OC1 uh, pickups. So passive EMGs, but because they are EMGs, they have that quick connect system. So putting in the wire is so much easier because you don't have a heavy pickup hanging on the other end. There we go. 
go and just snap. That's that. Plugged in. Go. And then the bridge pickup. Now, I'm not gonna affix the pickups just yet because I want to have the strings on in order to see the string spacing properly so I can get the pull pieces in the correct positions. Because having the pickups offset would be somewhat troublesome. First things first, cutting up some heat shrink to uh, cover up some of the exposed wires and also just to keep everything a lot nicer and tidier. That's kind of the main thing why I do it. Now in order to tell the neck and bridge pickup apart, because they do come from the same same hole, I'm adding colored heat shrink to the wires. Neck pickup gets blue and bridge pickup gets red. No particular reason for the colors, just helps me keep in mind which one's which. Now, this is a very important stage to do every single time when doing wiring that I see a lot of people um, not doing so tinning your wires this will make all the wiring so much easier i've seen so many people not doing this part at all granted when i first started doing wiring and i hated electronics of every sort i didn't do it because i didn't know that i had to do it and once i got taught to do it this way there's no going back. It just makes life so much easier. And yes, I'm still not the greatest person at electronics. I still follow diagrams just because that way I know I'll get it right. And yes, I know that at times I don't use the soldering iron the way you're meant to, or I don't solder correctly according to a lot of people, but it's it, it works for me. I've gotten used to doing things a certain way by now and it just makes my life faster to do it the way I know. Like there, I know I should be poking the solder straight onto the pot and not using the soldering iron as a tool to, yeah, anywho. One of those things that I know that someone would comment on in the video, so I'm being, uh, well, I'm beating everybody to the punch, so to speak. Mmm, solder and fumes. Always good for you. Tug just to make sure that everything is in place as it should be. I'm not going to go through the entire wiring process because, first of all, this camera angle isn't the greatest. But, yeah, I just followed up a diagram to get everything to get everything the way I needed it to be. 
And now, I finally put the pickups in place. So I mark out, or I drill out the holes for the pickup rings and screw the pickups in place according to the string spacing. So I have the pull pieces exactly where I want them. Now, the thing that I always forget, strap buttons. So again, using my Incra protractor here to find my center. There we are. So that's center thickness wise, and then because it's a multi-laminate neck, I'm able to follow the middle laminate piece to find the exact middle for one of the strap buttons. Here. Brattle, drill, and then a screwdriver to screw it in. I found that in the video I see wood dust and I instinctively want to blow the dust off my screen, which makes no sense. It's just something that I keep on finding myself almost doing which uh, feels very stupid now I'm trying to find a good place for the other strap button making sure that it doesn't feel uncomfortable when you're playing and that it makes sense in every way because if it's on the tip I always feel it kind of juts out a bit and isn't all that appealing. If it's on the back, and if it's in a good spot, it will not be uncomfortable. And it will look nice, because it's out of the way. Now, finally, intonation. So tuning, and then intonating accordingly. So, if you haven't intonated your guitar before, I don't know why you wouldn't have, the main idea is that you tune to, for example here, because it's a baritone, tuning the high B, making sure that, wait, is that, no, nope, tuning the G. So, tuning the G, and then making sure that the 12th fret is an octave above. aim is to get the same note both the open string and 12th fret except separate for an octave there we are so finally tuned up let's see what it sounds like with the jack so gonna fix that up but yeah that's basically why I don't play guitar and why I build them because yeah not the greatest player in the world now doing the setup 
Um, or now moving on to the final part of the setup. So after the guitar has set with the strings on and with tension, it's time to do the final bit of setup. So getting the nut height and the height of the nut slots correct. So the way I do that is by pressing down on the first fret and the fourth, try and think here. Yeah, on the fourth, then you'll see a little gap in between the string and the second fret. So, and then by fretting the second fret, I'll see a gap between the first fret and the string. The main goal here is to get those two gaps to be fairly close together, or fairly close. I'm not making any sense. Get those two gaps looking pretty much the same. <clears throat> and that gives you a really nice, comfortable action. Comfortable feel. So polishing up the nut, I'm using, first I'm using a 320 grit, just to get rid of all and any scratches that it might have still. And then polishing it back up to a very, very nice, shine. Of course this is a lot easier if you don't have your strings on, but I decided to do it this way. So going through all the different grits of fret rubbers to get it nicely, nicely polished up and looking very pretty. And with that done, it's time to move to the very last thing, which is cutting off the ends of the strings. So, that was the Throwback Baritone series. I hope all of you have enjoyed the series as it went on. And, uh, yeah, stay tuned to see what other things I have in store. Big things coming up, like I keep saying, but, yeah, I can't wait to show you. Hit like, be sure to comment down below, and subscribe for more. Bye-bye, see you guys next week.